Yes. Uh, agenda. You mean a public agenda? Yes. I bought the extra just in case. Fail. <laughs> if you have one. Copy of the agenda. Otherwise, I can just take notes. I'm. Well, if you've got one, take one. These are extra. Yeah. I just make We can probably get more copies if we need. So. Yeah. No, I'm I'm good as long as you guys are good. Yeah. So I can take notes here. Or there. We all got okay. Do we want to close that door? Sure. I think we should. And then we'll go ahead and get started. So we do have a full agenda today. I expect to be here flapping my jaws for 12 hours. <laughs> so <laughs> open up for lunch. Time out for lunch. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we'll go to the agenda. And the first item is um, we're going to let Jennifer talk with us, introduce herself, and tell us about herself and how she got here and turn the floor over to you, Jennifer. Okay. Thank you, Teresa. Yes. Uh, good morning. My name is Jennifer Vargo. I'm the Chief HR Officer for the City of Independence. And next month, at the end of next month, I will be here two years. Two years. Two years. God, yeah, because 19. Mm -hmm. So if you put that into perspective, about 15 or 16 months of that was COVID. So I had just started um, and, you know, for a few months and then we pandemic hit. So um, it's been quite an experience um, at the, at, well, for us, right? That, it was, well, um, before I came to the city of independence, um, I was in private sector for most of my career, mostly in care. Um, Let's see, I've done not for profit and a little bit of like finance slash telecommunications. So, this is my first experience in public. Let's see, what else can I tell you about myself? I have an undergrad in human resources management and I have an MBA. Um, I'm very excited to be here. Um, like I said, I think um, I'm much more suited now to meet with you all now that I've had some experience under my belt and see how we can move forward. Um, we've done some uh, organization. I can share with you now or um, not sure if that's we, maybe when we do the goals or something. Um, any, anything that you'd like to know? Um, and I'm here for you all. So, how did you happen on to this job, Jennifer? Um, well, it's funny. I got recruited by a recruiter. It um, it was on, you know, it was being advertised, and I wasn't necessarily looking. Yeah. But um, you know, it was for the city of Independence, which I actually live in Lee Summit, but I'm very familiar with Independence. Of course, I've spent lots of time here, and I've done public sector, so I would be a nice kind of add my resume. And so um, after talking multiple times with the recruiter, so very and, and of the city of independence. Uh, no. And I, she had been gone at least six months before I even started. So I, I, not, I don't even know Deborah. Did Deborah retire or what? I mean, I, yeah, I was amazed that she wasn't here anymore, I guess, because we don't meet that often. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, she did a wonderful job in my opinion. And, and then Dale was no longer here and she, she did a retired. wonderful job. And so we were taken back at the meeting that we scheduled in September of 19, which we didn't have a quorum for. But I mean, it's like, who are these people? And now we know who you are. I'm not sure I know who Dayla is. She was Dayla Schwartz. Oh, okay. She was a okay. <laughs> She's Mitch. Mitch is from. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, Deborah did retire. Yeah. My understanding. Yeah. yeah. Good for her. Yeah. Yeah. Good for her. Absolutely. Yay, retirement. Yay. Give me an R. Give me an E. Give me an e. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you know when I get there. You let me know, girl. <laughs> Five more months. You know. Oh my gosh, that's great. Good for you, Kendra. <clears throat> figure 40 years is enough. What, what are you doing? You say four months. In, in five months. Five months. Yep. 
And then on January 4th of 82, and I'm leaving on January 4th of 2022. Oh, that's great. I like that. And we have some folks in the room that I don't know. Would you mind introducing ourselves and tell us why you're here? <laughs> I'm Sarah White. I'm a specialist here for the city of Independence. I started back in November of 2018. Um, I started as the administrative assistant three for finance and administration and then was promoted to the financial specialist July of 2019. So I just assist Jennifer and Brian on everyday task and so I just thought I would sit in just in case anything was brought up that I could make sure we get going for you guys. Okay, thank you. Well, she does more than us. She, 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 she has all she of our work, comp and risk management. Yeah. Like, oh, and it's our, okay. Sarah. Sure. Yep. <laughs> so she is our liaison with yeah. Charles Ford. So yeah, she, she definitely. I do more than more. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> that's typically why I'm here. But her help is very appreciated, yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah, Maggie, especially being new. Workers' comp is not a little big program. Right. Well, luckily we have. Uh, the consulting firm we have, which is Charles Worth Consulting, and they're, oh. they're amazing to work with. So, so you can outsource quite a bit. Of mm -hmm. stuff. They do majority of it. I'm just kind of the boots on the ground for the oh, city. If okay. anybody has any direct questions or needs help getting something somewhere, I assist them. They know you. Okay, got it. And, uh, I'm Brian Kidney. I'm the director of finance and administration. So um, almost three years ago, I think is when I came on board. Um, there were multiple departments that had were going through some change. Uh, 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 no uh, I know that. Song. So, so for instance, it, you, you mentioned uh, Deborah earlier, so she had just retired. Uh, the tech service director was was retiring um, and the finance director, there was transition there. And so they thought they would bring in somebody to combine all those internal service department mm -hmm. under one and have administration or have a director for over just all administration. So that's what they did. And then I was able to hire some amazing, amazing folks. So HR okay. Yeah. Which yeah. is different than the way it was. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Used to, so under under me then is uh, HR, tech services, um, accounting, finance, procurement, budget, and then also uh, we also with work comp, we're all risk management, and then we also administer uh, kind of the behind the scenes onto the law department. So we are we are the administration behind the law department. Obviously, we have um, we outsource most of our legal services right now. Oh, we do. Okay. So does it have any staff attorneys? We uh, so we have two. We have uh, Mitch. Um, he's our full-time prosecutor, okay. and right now he's our interim um, city councilor. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You got a great job, Woo <laughs> You got a lot going on. So uh, uh, you mentioned. So my background is um, I'm going into my 30th year, I guess, as administrator. Um, I started at um, I was a auditor finance back. Back in the day, um, in 93, I was the county administrator for uh, Pottawatta County, Kansas, which is way out west. Uh, so I was there for a while, then I was a finance director in uh, uh, Manhattan, and then Gardner, and then in um, uh, City of Shawnee, uh, where I was over tech service. It was basically some of this job also over law department, those those places. Went to go work for a uh, um, private firm that outsourced finance director and did debt issuances, and I did that for multiple years. And then uh, one of my clients was City of Lawrence. They asked me to be their finance director, and so I was that for a while. And then uh, uh, with all the transition and, and wanting to rebuild administration here, um, they called and recruited me out of Lawrence and I came in. Wow. I love this place. Absolutely. It's by far the most rewarding job I've had. In what way? Just, uh, we, we always joke, uh, we're, we're bringing us up into the 90s. Um, so there's, just, um, 
Love it. You're there's just, about me. <laughs> just uh, and you'll see with, uh, as we talk about your personnel policies and everything, they just have not been updated for a while. And we're seeing that. We've seen that in all of our departments. And so they asked me to just basically modernize. And it's just so rewarding. I just love it. I love what this, I love what our teams are doing. What's doing that me? I didn't beat you. Oh. I was like, I was like, Sam, you're from Pablo? Or? Well, I'm from town outside of Topeka, Kansas, mm. but my first job was as the administrator of Pablo in the county. Pablo oh, Adamie, Kansas. Yeah. That's up by Nebraska territory, isn't it? Close to Nebraska? Uh, it's uh, man, city of Manhattan is is partially in Pablo County, so it's along Highway 24 area between Topeka and Manhattan. Yeah. A lot of ways out there. Mm -hmm. About two hours out of work. No, not quite that part, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. feels like it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my new <laughs> son in law, his, his father is out towards there. So, well, this is all about you guys, so let's. <laughs> okay. All right. Got it. Okay. Well, let's go to uh, the second agenda item. And so I thought what we would do would be just go around the room, introduce ourselves, give as much information as you want to about yourself. You don't have to tell your bus size or your waist size. Or your <laughs> that, but okay, let's we'll check off those things. Then. Yeah, just spread that off your agenda there. But, but um, you know, as much information as you want. So, Ron, why don't we start with you? Oh, yeah, okay. Well, uh, my first job in this field was. In the city of independence uh, some of these personnel rules that you were talking about i sort of worked on some way back in the dark ages <laughs> and so i was sort of in the city well, i was in the city manager's office uh because of an opening that occurred there waiting to go into graduate school at ku so i really had some great experience with the city of independence for a short period of time and i worked at the city of lawrence in the planning department when i was there uh, at, at graduate school and then interned at the city of Kansas City, Missouri, as assistant to the personnel director for about a year and a half. Uh, moved to Ames, Iowa, stayed there for 22 years, worked for the city manager uh, for about half of that period and got an offer to be associate hospital administrator. The city had a hospital, which was about like 235 beds, kind of a little smaller than center point, but it's a fairly active hospital. And so I was there for up until about 1990, and then I moved from there back to Kansas City and uh, went to work at Truman Medical Center as director of HR at Truman Lakewood, and then a year and a half downtown at the campus downtown and uh, taught at Avila College in the uh, MBA program and, uh, and, uh, and had taught uh, on an adjunct basis to the uh, <coughs> For a period of time. Uh, that's kind of a thumbnail sketch. She was served on this committee about 13 years and was on the Board of Adjustment before that for two years. So. Do some volunteer work in the community. You do volunteer work. Well, yeah, I, I was at a center point for about 10 years volunteering. Yeah. We, we operated the, uh, you know, actually ran a gift shop until it became privatized. Yeah. And they sold the business to a private operator and volunteers could not work anymore since the auxiliary had disbanded. Yeah. So, yeah. And what was your name? You didn't introduce yourself to me first. Sorry, I'm just teasing. You said Ron Adams. Me? Are you, are you talking to me? I, I didn't hear what you said. I didn't mean at oh, the beginning. Oh, Ron Adams. Yeah. Thank Ron you, Ron. Adams. Oh, okay. Oh, Ron. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I know the inside. Yeah. Yes, he's the one that sends all the emails. <laughs> For both. Right. Thank you, Bob. Okay. okay, why don't we just okay. shall we? Yeah. I'm Laura Dominic. Uh, I okay, you um, have a degree in <laughs> oh, Jayhawks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I have a degree in business administration and accounting with a minor in computer science. Uh, I was recruited to work at Arthur Anderson. I'm a CPA, worked in audit and tax there. 
and then and I will also just throw in that I did not share documents. I never worked in the Houston office and I never ever worked on anything to do with what ended up becoming the Sarbanes-Oxley <laughs> issues. Um, it's not part of any of Enron's problems um, because in the meantime, I'd love to go to a smaller firm over in Johnson County, GRA Thompson White, where I helped them start a um, uh, benefits consulting practice. Um, then I finally decided that I really wish I had gone into medicine instead of going into accounting. So I left and became a paramedic. I was a paramedic for 15 years, both in Kansas City and Johnson County. Had an elbow injury, and when you have an elbow injury and you can't lift people anymore, a worker's comp comes in and says, sorry. So I uh, had to get out of the paramedic field. Um, then I uh, went to work as the chief administration for Great Plains SPCA, not our animal shelter anymore, but you know, I was over both campuses, handled payroll, OSHA, worker's comp, the urinal's overflowing, the phones need to be changed, the computer doesn't work, you know, the whole nine yards of kind of like Sarah Lake, all, <laughs> all of it. go get Laura, <laughs> you know, type thing. Uh, and then I found this business um, that I own now is Heartland DNA. It's a private business uh, doing primarily paternity testing uh, for my three largest clients are Great Circles, uh, Cornerstones of Care, and Crittenton. I do their DNA testing for their foster children, so I own my own business. Um, I have Lived in the city of Independence for 20-ish years. Um, served on the Public Safety Sales Tax Committee. Um, I currently serve Office of the Personnel Board since 15, I believe. Um, I am the Independence Representative to the Kansas City Board of Trustees and the, Pub the, Bu the Public Library Board of Trustees. Um, I'm the chair of the 353 Southwest Independence Redevelopment Corporation here in Independence. Um, did I say them all? <laughs> Personnel board is personnel, 353, and the city is what I do now. Um, I also volunteer with Heart to Heart International, their disaster medical response team, um, and handle data management for them, basically. I have other things that I volunteer with that, that covers the basics. Well, my turn. <laughs> okay. I'm Kendra Brockman. I was born in Sugar Creek, Missouri, in 1957. <laughs> at the corner of Kentucky and Sterling. Used to be a clinic there. Okay, I was gonna say, oh, this sounds like a bad bad uh, ambulance call. <laughs> no. You got a woman delivering a baby at the corner. <laughs> no, it was, that it was, was a clinic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, it was a clinic. I was told I was born at a little after 10. Had to be after gun smoke, because my dad said, wait till after gun smoke, so. That's my favorite show. So yes, he made her wait till after gun smoke was over. And so, anyway, been in independence all my life. Um, married, have two children, had two children. I have one now. And my son passed in 2000 and and my daughter's newly married, remarried, have one grandchild. Um, let's see. Started spoiled out in the middle field. Spoiled or not spoiled? The grandchild. Whoops, spoiled rotten. Yes. Favorite. And uh, that started out in the medical field. Uh, did uh, did uh, the nursing school through um, Independence Regional Hospital. And got out of, went out of it, because um, I had two small children. And uh, then I got hired on it. I decided, well, let's try something different. So I applied at Lake City Army Ammunition Plant almost 40 years ago. Let's see, I ran the lead shop there for 11 and a half years, been a gun gunner for the past. 20 plus years. Um, so I test all the ammunition and I have the calluses on my fingers to prove. Oh. And I stand over a gun every night and pull the trigger <laughs> all night long. And uh, been on the personnel board for 25 plus years. And let's see, I'm a landlord. I had four properties. Now I'm down to three. Uh, I'm not a slumlord. I am a landlord. Oh. I take pride in all my houses. Um, other than one, I got a storage house, so I bought it just for the garage alone. And uh, let's see what else. 
uh, my husband's newly retired. I retired from my first contractors last October, but because I'm greedy, I'm double dipping. So I told my boss that I plan on going out January the 4th of 2022. But if he pisses me off, it could be a lot sooner. <laughs> and he said, I would like some advance notice. And I said, you'll have about 10 minutes notice because I'm cleaning out my locker and, and changing my shoes. So other than that, let's see, uh, what else do I do? Uh, I hunt fish, take care of my mother, take care of my father, take care of my diabetic husband. Um, I have a little, a little gal that's been with me and stay, sleeping on my couch for the last three years. She was homeless, gave her a vehicle. She's got a full-time <laughs> job. And so I'm taking care of her. And then I have my granddaughter who I'm raising because her dad's in Florida and I refuse to send her because uh pandemic and I don't need her uh, exposed to that. So other than that, life has been grand. <laughs> Are you required to wear your dark glasses? I worked until two o'clock this morning. So you're not. So I to... didn't get home till two thirty, and then because uh, I worked from two o'clock in the afternoon to twelve thirty at night. But because this is our month end, supposedly. <laughs> They require that we stay there and work because they have stuff that they have to get out. And so in order for us to make our schedules, this plan to make their schedules, we stay and shoot until till it's all done. And, uh, and I still have to go in Sunday. And so, mm. uh, Yes, it's mm. quite a trip. So I work anywhere from 50 hours and work me up to 60 hours a week besides taking care of everything else. You don't have any fun, do you? Uh, yes, I get the fun of chewing up the guards at the West Gate. I'm oh. on you. So, yes, I do, I do that on a regular so basis. Don't become a guard at the West Gate. Well. <laughs> don't become a guard at the West Gate. Right. After. Okay, got it. <laughs> All right, sir. My name is Carl Blair. I'm from uh, Augusta, Georgia. I have been in the Midwest for, uh, I don't know, probably since 19. So my life got transition over here to independence about 20 uh, years ago. Prior to coming to the Midwest, I was in that. Uh, I worked in Georgia, uh, Georgia World Veterans Home in the HR department there. And uh, after coming to the Midwest, I had been here for 20 some odd years, single father, two children, two boys. Uh, 24 hours a day <laughs> and uh, I've been on this uh, particular board for I think this will be my third term something I'm, I'm, I don't keep counting things like that I just keep living uh, <laughs> I enjoy what I do and I enjoy and love uh, the city of independence in my community and I, I am 100 percent uh, involved in a lot of community activities and uh, I don't see me leaving or going anywhere anytime soon. I think I'm going to take my senior, the rest of my senior years right here in this city and in this state. Wait, you're a senior? What? Not yet. I'm, okay. Hey, I'm, I want to, I'm looking for Ron. Ron I'm like, Ron, I'm, I want to get there. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get there. As soon as I came there, because I would still be at, I don't, no offense. I just don't want to carry a cane when I'm starting, when I retire. I would, I would still want to chase after my kids, ride a four wheel, go to the lake, fish. I don't want to, not slow down. I want my, before my body retires, <laughs> you know, because after a while, your body starts retiring. So you can't get up as fast as you used to. Mm -hmm. And you start hearing sounds that you wasn't making before, like, uh, 
I can get up. So I'm trying to retire. I do plan to retire in the next two years. And uh, so, so here, mm -hmm. I don't want them to have my youth and my seat. So I ain't doing it. I'm take, I'll go. Yeah. I ain't, they ran out of my body. I'm gonna have at least five years. Of, no cane and no walker. <laughs> <laughs> That's my goal. <laughs> So I'm Teresa Conwell, and um, my background is in healthcare. I was with Children's Mercy Hospital in Human Resources for 35 years. Retired from there. Loved every minute of that experience. So who wouldn't like working for the benefit of children? It's wonderful. Um, have a master's degree. Uh, married. Um, have two grandsons. Um, can't get started talking about them. They are everything. They are the sun and the moon and the everything. So um, they fish and I fish and they hunt and I, well, they think I'm not, I'm not really hunting, but um, they're very active. One um, is a ball freak. So every kind of sport where there is a ball involved, he is involved, so he does football and baseball, and he is um, uh, currently at uh, a camp for, um, uh, he goes to camps for his uh, favorite sports, and so he's currently at a camp in Florida. Um, so we're, and the other one, the older one, uh, races cars, so he's a sprint car racer, and that's pretty fun and pretty exciting and pretty scary. Um, for probably about 15, 16, 17, 18 years, something like that, I was invited to the board by a uh, person who was the director of personnel at Independence Regional uh, before we retired. Um, and I have loved every minute of this membership. Um, The Lord has treats for all of us. Can you pass that this way? We'll all take a bite. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Lick it all. Lick it all first. Okay. I apologize. This is my breakfast. <laughs> I do that a lot. My name is Coffee. Oh, I love. Yeah, love them both. Okay, so let's go to the third agenda item where we're going to ask Jennifer to give us a briefing on the goals that the city has or that she has for human resources. Okay. Okay. So, um, a, a little bit of like me and my philosophy of HR. I've been in HR for probably almost 30 years. Yeah. So, a long time. Um, my very first introduction to HR was at Marion Laboratories. And mm -hmm. I don't know if you all remember mm -hmm. Marion Laboratories. Oh, yeah. yeah. But you and Marion Kaufman. So, I, I had the great pleasure to work for him for 13 or 14 years. So that that is how I grew up. I got my MBA when I was working there. Um, it's where I learned business and leadership and HR. And so um, I feel very blessed to have had that opportunity. Ewing Marion Kaufman was one of the all time best leaders, I believe that has ever, ever blessed our community. Um, so after leaving there, they they merged several times and moved their headquarters to New Jersey, which I was invited to do that. But at the at the end of the day, I could not see myself living in New Jersey. I had just started dating my current husband. And so I just it wasn't for me. So I stayed here, um, but it was it was hard to go to other organizations because they did not they did not operate the same way. So. That was a learning opportunity for me, um, but I feel very strongly about leadership and that leadership is a very important quality for all organizations. So I've done all the disciplines within HR and, and moved up to, you know, running HR departments. Um, but I believe that being a partner to leaders is very important for HR. So while we do lots of the administrative pieces, of course, to HR, it's important for us to be partners with the different 
directors, leaders, you know, whatever those titles are to the business and to understand the business and to be able to be a, a resource, if you will, to, to the different departments. So I've spent my career understanding business and trying to understand the organization. So I spent uh, a lot of the first part of my time at the City of Independence um, under Brian, and he's been awesome teaching me about the public sector, right? It's very different from how I was disciplined <laughs> in HR, um, but there are there are some similarities. Uh, and then also just trying to learn the organization. Uh, this is my first working with unions. So, mm -hmm. and um, as you well know, we have about almost 80% of our workforce is covered by work agreements. And so that that's a challenge <laughs> and it's also a great opportunity. Um, then, like I said, right when I started, we were introducing the Munis payroll system. I'm sure you all have heard about that. Uh, so that that is a that was a big deal to us in, in our organization because payroll obviously is very important in my mind. If payroll is going to uh, report to HR, which it does, it is you you got to get that in order, right? You have to have a good system. You have to have a good payroll. So we we introduced Munis. We had a few hiccups, um, and then immediately COVID hit in March of 2020, right? So I spent a lot of that time trying to navigate with Christina Heinen and and Zach and Adam and Brian, COVID, right? So we're 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 putting policies in place. We're we're operating in a new environment remotely. We're um, having emergency command meetings. You know all these things that we've never done. Um, but through that, actually, it gave me a really good opportunity to learn the different departments because I had to work so closely with the employees and the managers navigating splitting up their you know their their workforces figuring out how to operate so if if somebody was exposed in this work group it wouldn't shut down the operation you know it was just it was a fascinating time and so let's call it fascinating right <laughs> I just call it what you will yeah so during oh and back up just a moment so when I started at the city um, it was just myself and then Terry Covington was here, Marisa Willis and Melissa, Melissa Bellino. So I had quite a challenge. I mean, that, that's a very small HR group for over a thousand employees and almost a thousand retirees. So, you know, we, we also service a whole nother group which is the retirees and they're a very important part to the city, right? They they uh, we we cover them on benefits. We, uh, we, we spend a lot of time. <laughs> so there's over 2000 people that we that we try to service from from the HR group. Mm -hmm. So again, the most important thing was getting the systems, getting those to work so we could get payroll. Um, it, Quickly, we quickly realized we needed a payroll manager. It, it was a little surprising that we had never had a payroll manager. We have a, I don't know, 70 or $80 million payroll. So <laughs> we hired a real deal payroll manager through COVID. So we did most of it remotely, which was um, really kind of neat. Like we've never done that before. So now we know how to do that. Uh, we got Holly. I'm just going to kind of work through the org chart too. Is that okay if I do that and, and yeah. talk about each person? So we ha um, hired Holly. Um, her her most recent before she came here was at Black and Beach. So she uh, ran all the payroll there for all of their unions. So she was very familiar, and they are all over the United States. And as you know, they're an engineering firm, so they they had projects and everything all over the United States. So she was very familiar with contracts, just the union environment, uh, different pay codes and different ways that 
that the unit <laughs> operates. So we are very lucky to get her. She is an amazing payroll manager. She knows she has learned Munis in no time. Um, she, I, I am confident in saying that payroll has never been better at the city. She, she has really done a great job of just stabilizing and and getting it to a really good place. When did she come on? Um, was it? You said during COVID. Yeah, so I think it was like maybe September, October of last year. So she hasn't been here a, a, a real long time, but she has made a significant impact in just the things that she's been able to do and just familiarizing herself with the different pays. And, you know, we have a very unique payroll <laughs> in the city of independence with the fire. They have their own FLSA rules, as you know. So, um, but I feel really good about where our payroll is. Okay, thank you. Um, and then Katrina Sanders, whom you may know, she's been here at the city for, for many years, um, is our payroll specialist and she reports to Holly. So they pretty much handle all the payroll for the city of independence. Do you have any questions about payroll or? I do. Um, uh -huh. Now, I know like on like finance and audit, there's a woman named, isn't her last name Gray? Cindy. Mm -hmm. Cindy. Where does Cindy fit in? Is she's, she's obviously in finance or mm -hmm. accounting or whatever on the payroll side, right? So she, she's our CFO. So she's, okay. she's pretty much the finance director, even though I'm called the finance right. director of finance on. She's the CFO director of finance. Payroll okay. used to be under her. Okay. She's also been tasked with taking over the full Glow Units project. Okay. So that's where you probably see her quite a bit. Yeah, and like her, her, yeah. Yeah. this afternoon. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. So she, yeah, yeah, she's, she's, yeah. And she knows all the modules of Munis. So, you know, the procurement modules, the accounting modules, payroll modules. And so when I started, she was actually you know, managing the implementation <laughs> of Munis. So that was, like he said, that was her project. But she's, they're peers. So we are peers and we sure. work yeah, together. I just couldn't, she, I, she's awesome. I knew it was great. I couldn't <laughs> yeah. Cindy and I'm like, yeah. yeah. But, she's um, amazing. She is amazing. Um, and I just want to bring this up because I don't know. And if you guys are all like, yes, we're well aware of this, then, you know, I'm, we're just trying to catch up, obviously, from Absolutely. 19 to where we are now. Um, Unfortunately, when Munis, the payroll system, went into effect on January 1 of 2000, of 2020, um, the fire payroll, I'm just going to say it Do bluntly, it. it was a mess. And it was a mess for months um, because I, when I worked at Johnson County Med Act, I, when I was on light duty with a shoulder injury, my, my CPA background or whatever, they were looking, you know, helping with payroll and that type of thing. There's nothing easy about working a 24-hour payroll system nothing at all easy about it um so unfortunately when munis was put in place the modules that for payroll that tyler technologies put in this munis system there were a lot of problems we had people who were getting paid for holidays but hadn't even started with the city on the holiday they got they got paid on the first payroll but they weren't there on january 1st so they got paid they were overpaid sometimes people were paid double the amount they were supposed to be paid. Some were paid under the amount they were supposed to be paid. Some would have their um, their uh, years of service was didn't get adjusted right. So there was going back and fixing all these things. And I know it's an extremely difficult job. Unfortunately, I have to say this, it went on for months. Um, and I believe now, if I understand correctly, that those have all been fixed. Now there's still like a coding error, you know, like somebody's going to code something wrong. I mean, that's going to happen no matter what, you know, somebody puts 20 hours instead of two or something like that. Or, you know, like when COVID came in, there were new codes for, are you, are you getting paid for COVID over time? Of course, which we have to keep track of for emergency preparedness so we can get our money back from FEMA or, you know, the feds, whoever it be. Um, so, you know, you put in a new code, there's a new thing, how do the firefighters report it and that type of thing. So there was a very large struggle with that. Um, but again, my understanding now is that all of those overpays and underpays have been <coughs> fixed and taken care of. Um, so that is much on a much better platform now. But I also understand from at least the last, if not last two finance and audit committee meetings that 
you guys are looking at a new system for just fire, correct? And it's called executime, maybe? No, that's the time and attendance. That's time and attendance mm -hmm. for like or the whole field. city. Okay. It would be for the whole city. Oh, okay. It's, a, it's an electronic timekeeping system. Which I know we talk about like yeah. guys, employees are out in IPL and working on different projects and whether they can, you know, here and there and all that. But I thought there was, I thought there was a specific program you guys were looking at to change the fire payroll over to. Fire so house. as part of execute time, okay. they have what's called advanced scheduling. Okay. So that is what we have been looking at for fire and police specifically. Okay. Um, in fact, just several weeks ago, we we had a demo with the the uh, fire and police mm -hmm. and well, specifically for them to see if it would work for them. And uh, and then that will roll up into Munis. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And when do you think like? I mean, obviously, when you just started talking to somebody about it, doesn't mean this is coming into effect in a month or two months or whatever and all that kind of stuff. What's the timeline for if you're going to change something like that? Are you going to try to do it by January 1 to keep on a calendar year for yeah, purposes um, and things? We have to first make sure that it is going to work for them. And I, I, I think we're at a good spot. Sure. The last thing that um, was happening is we got some references that are using it for fire and police that and yeah. the chiefs were going to try to talk to some of them and, and just see like what what their experience has been yeah um, and when we do make the decision if it is going to work for them our plan is to implement it in phases and so we would actually start with if you will the easier groups that sure. That sure. don't have any complicated. Um, right, your eight to five Monday through Fridays correct. work. Correct. You know. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, if we move forward with this, we would expect to be able to actually um, start that probably later this fall. Okay. Just implementing in pilot test groups, so we so along the way we can we can know any nuances. So will you be able to run parallel then for those mm -hmm. times? Absolutely. Okay, because I know I think that was a frustration with the old system was like JDE. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we couldn't couldn't run parallel with Munis because one contract ended and one began, and so I think that you know anytime I've seen like somebody do a like when we change software providers at um, Great Plains, we ran parallel so that I knew that I ran my my payroll as I expected it to be, and then boom, yeah. okay, something. Wasn't coded right, or we learned, or whatever. So I'm glad to hear that you build a run in might, parallel. I, and I might point out that, that this is a data collection. Right, it's not that I'm actually doing payroll calculations, so we wouldn't. Right, we we're not restricted to a, a certain calendar year or something like that. Got gotcha. it. Which makes it definitely parallels. It is difficult because there's probably 40 different ways people in the department in the city right now collects payroll. And that's what this does. It's just it's going to be get everybody all, on the same. Everyone's on the same page. You know, Good. So. And he's not exaggerating when he says forty different ways. Oh, oh yeah. It, like, but, that's in my mind the next thing to fix is timekeeping. Yeah. Which all of you with HR background know that's pretty numbers. important to yeah, exactly. that we're collecting <laughs> time correctly and and so it, it's a way to standardize that. And I think that's that's great. And I know. Um, you know, like equating it to your hospital experience, you know, like St. Luke's, they have a building and then they add another building and then another wing and another building and three floors and this and that, you know, as the city's grown, you know, IPL guys, I, when I say guys, I don't mean not gender specific, just employees, yeah. um, you know, they have different needs than the fire department needs, than someone who's clocking in and out, you know, like all of those different needs. So, yeah, I think it would be impressive and pull all of that together and once just so yeah. That's a big project, but glad to hear it. So this weekend, we're actually upgrading units. So starting okay. today, <laughs> yeah, um, Tyler is m migrating our um, older version of units to the, the V19 is what it's called. Do you have any consternation about that? Um, no, you know, again, Holly, our payroll manager, mm -hmm. has done multiple parallels in the new version yeah. in the test environment so she's comfortable with it. absolutely uh and this is a non-payroll week so i assume. Absolutely. so you're yeah so we you never do today. it on a day of payroll. right we got paid today so that's right. all good yeah. understood <laughs> um, understood yeah so okay. uh we're we're 
pretty confident. I mean, you know, as confident as you can be. Sure. But it all it all worked in the test environment. Good. Um, it's there's not a lot of the the visual piece of Munis has changed and it looks a little more modern. Yeah. There's not a lot of um, uh, technical things that have changed behind right. the scenes. Right. So it's a little more user friendly. And yes. Okay. Yes. Very um, good. And once that's well, I'll I'll talk about that. Sure. Later on, but. Yeah. That's payroll. So thank you for bringing out the timekeeping yeah. because that is like the actual next big thing in in payroll. Once we get the migration done, that they'll be that they're continue to work on. Okay. Thank you. Yes, and thank you for bringing up the nightmare <laughs> of class. <laughs> I know. I know. I don't know how you like. We yeah. bring on a new system, and then COVID, and then yeah. operating in a tornado. Yes. In fact, my last day in the office was sitting over at Fire Station One meeting firefighters. Yeah. Going over their paychecks mm -hmm. and stuff. And then. Then your next meeting over there would have been with the emergency. Yeah, emergency well, in fact, when I was there, we all went downstairs. And <laughs> no, I didn't even know it was there. Oh, I was like, where the command center is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. We spent a lot of money on that command center. Yeah, it's very nice. But yeah, that. Command center, excuse me. Yes. So thank you. That yep. answers it. Okay. Okay, so moving to the next uh, position is our HR analyst, and we just hired Tammy Lindsay. So Tammy Lindsay has been with the city for, um, gosh, I don't even know how many years, but she started in water. Eight or nine years. Yes, she started in water. Um, well, she's been in water the whole time, really. Mm -hmm. uh, as their, uh, she was like a support services supervisor. Dan, basically. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and, and worked for Dan Montgomery. Um, I don't know how many of you know Tammy, but she she's an amazing employee. She's on the employee engagement committee. She's done lots of um, committees and things at the city. Uh, before she came to the city, she had HR uh, in her background. And so she uh, had years of HR. And when before we hired her into this position full time, she'd actually been, Dan was so gracious to have her help us. Um, when we needed some help in HR, and so she was actually doing some. I don't know if anyone will help lend us employees in the future. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's boarded that off now, like no. Yeah. So, um, but she really wanted that job. She was very excited. Yes, she, and I'm excited to have her. She, yeah, she is, she is yeah. amazing. She's and got more energy than all of my nieces yeah. and nephews. <laughs> and not only that, she's super smart, and she is picked up on Eunice, and. The, the analyst role um, does a lot of things with payroll. So she does the HR side of payroll before it actually gets to payroll to be processed. So her and Holly have a great relationship. They work very closely together. Um, Tammy is also um, already, she's, she's done a great job, but she will be the union contract expert. So when we have um, changes when we when we negotiate new contracts, she will work with Holly to make sure that any salary changes, any comp, you know, how we right. calculate comp time or holiday or or whatever that may be, that that all gets implemented into payroll correctly. Um, she will also be um, like the uh, so like Adam has ha asked her to do several calculations or or. Data analysis. That data analysis for contract negotiations. So she will, she'll do all of that, plus help us with comp studies and any of those things. That will be Tammy's role. And has she, she come over into that role less? Because last time I retired, she was still over with Dan. Does um, she come over now? Yeah, she's, 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 she's over now. Here full time. Yeah, she was actually here yesterday. Yesterday was her first. Yes. Um, so she has been over there, and she will be a little bit sure when her replacement is it's going to be Tamara. Is taking her place, um, but it'll be a fair since Tamara's already with the city. Right. It'll be a yeah, good it'll be a short transition. Short yeah. transition. So yeah, but she's here full time, and she's she's just it's like she's been here forever. Like she she's just amazing. Um, and then the next box is our benefits administrator. So that was Terry Covington. And speaking of, give me an R, give me an E, give me a T. <laughs> she retired. Um, and I, I could not be happier for Terry. You know, she worked for the city for almost 20 years and, you know, she, she'd seen and been through a lot with the city. Um, so 
when she said it was time for her to retire, I couldn't think of anyone more deserving of being able to kind of go off into the sunset. Terry has um, worked with literally hundreds of employees, helping them retire. That was a part of her job and, and walking them through the process. And then once they are retired, you know, supporting them and servicing them as a retiree. So um, I was very happy for her to be able to do that. Uh, and then I was very as happy that Melissa was interested in that role. So Melissa started with the city, I think, three years ago. Uh, and three, 18, and three and a half. Three and a half years. As an HR intern. So she has her MPA um, and, and came on as an intern in the HR department and um, then was the HR, I think, admin generalist and now our benefits administrator. And she has done an amazing job as well, just learning HR, learning the city. Um, honestly, I can see her running a city someday. Like I, 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 mm -hmm. I have high hopes for her. Like she, she's just that good and that that talented. Um, but so she role um, as our benefits administrator. So you know she will do all the things that Terry did. Um, we, you know, my expectation of Melissa will be to um, see what's next in benefits. So we have a very rich program, benefits program, uh, but to familiarize herself with that. And then what else? What's best in class? What, what, what's, what, is there anything that we're missing? Um, and just be that for, you know, the city. So is she working? You know, of course, Lisa's on-site Cigna and that uh -huh. type of thing, and Selena. Is she, when you say benefits, that's stay well is going to be under her? Um, Are you talking more uh, benefits other than health care? No, I no. She would, she's for all benefits. Um, she definitely is the liaison for the stay well committee. Okay. But I okay. wouldn't say that it's under her. R right. Um, okay. So she's the, she's obviously since Terry's gone, she's the new liaison. Yeah. To stay well. So okay. we, you know, Brian and I probably work with them the most. Um, and sure, you know, that that's <laughs> huge. Yeah, issues. that, yeah, yeah, huge yeah. Job. and you know, huge the, the current chair, um, and and the, the retiree rep, they've been on the committee for a long time and and they know the plan and they're doing a great job and we have a great relationship with them. So we're we're trying to navigate that. Um, it's I think that's improved a lot. Yeah, that relationship is. I would say time. when I first got on board, it was a troubled relationship. Yes, but um, but they're amazing. I just absolutely, and I'm not just saying that because the chair is awesome, and mm -hmm. because the chair and Sarah are <laughs> basically <laughs> engaged. In that but but uh, I'm not saying that it didn't hurt either. But. <laughs> But no, they they're so professional. Yeah. And just uh, everyone on that on that group, they they care about employees. And that's what we're all about here. So uh, we we have the same goals in mind. So that I think before there was just maybe some personality. Oh, I think so. I think so too. And then and then after you know 2019 when you know the whole retiree Medicare eligible uh, retiree issue came up and you know things got. A lot of things were like there was cracks, but then like it, that all gelled back together, and yeah, that was the big thing that went on. And, and it's the city hundred million dollars. That is absolutely. It's an emotional topic, and oh yes, especially with different groups, some who are in it because they yeah. are retired or yeah. they're <laughs> going to retire. They are Medicare eligible. They are not Medicare eligible. Somebody who still works here wants to, you know, like, oh yeah, it was those meetings were it was a lot of data, a lot of information, but it all gelled together. Yeah. So, so our goal is, you know, to have a strong professional relationship with the Stable Committee, um, and 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 keep sight of the big picture. I think sometimes when we're talking about our medical, people tend to get a little bit more narrow focus, but. We do have to keep the big picture in mind, mm -hmm. um, and and Mike and Cindy are doing a great job, and I, you know, I, I yeah, have no issues, and um, yeah, so it's Jennifer. Where is that at? We had a meeting about three years ago, 
where we talked about the right. issue of retiree health insurance. And, you know, like we all know, almost nobody does it other than the city of Independence and a few, you know, I lived in Iowa a number of years ago and, and none of the municipalities uh, provided retiree health insurance, let alone pay for it. So this was an extremely generous benefit. And so are we at any point, I know the political ramifications, are we anywhere near getting out of that obligation? I mean, it's a terrible obligation for a city, uh, the city to have to pay, like it's you say, you've got a thousand <laughs> retirees. Yeah, but well, and, and we fixed that in that when we had that meeting to discuss that, that yeah, anybody has so, you know, higher July 1st of 19 going forward, when they retire, they will not have it. Right. They will so not have They can buy it, coverage, it will, but they can't, they will get no contract action. Now, between now and then, which is 70 years. Huh? Right, right. I mean, you think about how many years 50, you have to hire 50, somebody. 70, 70 years. So eventually, yeah. eventually that I won't live long enough to but do that. But I mean, is the city going to go well before that's over? I mean, you know, I mean, it's nice to do that, but, yeah. you know, three years ago when they told us what the rates were, were a whole lot different than the rates I was familiar with and, you know, in, in a comparable city. And uh, Well, and we've had to make what? Two two million dollar infusions into Staywell, is that right? Uh, so I, I can trust. You. So uh, we're going to be making a one point eight million dollar infusion out of the CARES money. Out of the CARES or uh, AARP. And then AARP. we have budgeted for another another two point two million dollars okay. to subsidize the plan um, for the next two years. Okay, while that's a two we work years. On redesign of the plan to to make it more viable um, and they've hired CBiz, mm -hmm. which is a benefits consulting group and that type of stuff to kind of look at all these things and but but i will say um as of right now i don't see anything in the certainly not in the manager's budgets or anything that has anything about not covering the obligation of retirees and I mean, this that that could be a recommendation out of this board if you're ever interested in, in doing that. Um, but it would probably come from this board or the audit finance committee or something if they're ever interested in that. And we, we can, um, if, if the if, if the board's interested, um, I could always bring kind of the uh, uh, the the analysis behind what what the obligation is and where we are with that and everything. We get that annually as part of the financial statement. So mm -hmm. I'll have that probably in, uh, I don't know if this is, uh, probably in December or January, I'd be able to. I'm, personally, I, I'm not interested in doing that at all. In 2019, when we went through the Medicare eligible mm -hmm. and, and those moving off, um, those people who are already retired or, you know, like say you're, you know, four months away, five months away from your retirement and you're counting on that and you change that benefit on somebody. Oh, yeah, I, I don't think that's fair. Yeah, you know, I so I think that though the city won't benefit, the state will plan won't benefit from this for again decades by the time most of us are pushing up daisies. Um, it has, you know, there's a stop to it and people were grandfathered in that was hired that were hired July 1 of 19 before that. Now, I mean, there's also concern to me, though, that like for instance, we're having problems hiring police officers. Um, you know, and, and I don't know any of the specifics, but there's always you know talk about you know, sign on sign on bonus and things like that, which has its other comp and benefits issues. But um, you know, one of them is because I worked in public safety as an EMS and fire, you know, around fire and police and everything, is that you can give someone an incentive to start. And then, you know, okay, you have to give us two years. Say you have to give two years to the department for this $5,000 bonus or whatever it is. Well, then oftentimes what happens is those people, if we're not the top benefits, the top pay, you know, that kind of thing, they'll take that training and they will go to another department. Mm -hmm. And so I am a little concerned that we are, that we will have people who are looking more to the future. I mean, some people at 20 or 19 or 18 or whatever they're not looking to their retirement as you know that's just an education piece and who knows what's going to happen with health care 50 years but 
we're not offering that long-term incentive. Yeah. You know, we're not, there's no, there's no pull there to say, oh, I mean, they will at least be able to still have coverage, assuming everything stays the same, they just have to pay for it. Right. You know. So yeah, those, those sign-on bonuses are just short-term thinking. Absolutely. They're not planning down the road for right. career-type positions. So that's just really a waste of money. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then you get compression of salaries, you know. Exactly. You get all kinds of problems. Yeah. And if you want to compete with Oakland Park, you want to be, it was like when I was at MedAct, it's like, well, we could compete with Oakland Park Fire for paramedic pay. But as soon as we raise our pay, they raise theirs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We raise ours, they, you know, so somebody has to stop. And Oakland Park has a lot of money, so they weren't, they weren't willing to stop if we wanted to play that game. So that's a tough situation, but. I, so, so you got to make things nicer in this community, make people want to go to work, i.e. out in the third district, a new public safety building. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, you know, you, everybody wants to go to work in a nice, sh uh, shiny place. And, you know, I mean, maybe that would be a good incentive to have a new fire station to replace the station number two and, and get it out where all those apartments are going. And, uh, you know. Yeah, and I know, I know Chief Short's working on you know, all that deployment stuff and everything. So, yeah. We're sorry, we've talked no. too much. But... <laughs> no, no, it's... I think it's strong. I just had many nice conversations. I call all this stuff closely, so like, I was trying to catch up between, you know, the last time we've met and where we are with things, so. Um, and the next box is HR generalist, and that's Marisa Willis. Marisa Willis uh, was here when I started. Um, she's been here, I think, nine years. Mm -hmm. So now she's the most tenured. <laughs> uh, After it was there, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, So Marisa um, right now is helping. She kind of took over some of Melissa's stuff when Melissa got promoted. Uh -huh. And so then, uh, which is really what Heather will do. So she's, she's kind of doing a couple of jobs right now. Mm -hmm. uh, but... Uh, her, her main uh, role as HR generalist will be to bring employee development and training back. We, ha we haven't done that for a while, and um, so she will do that. She also implemented the Stop It program. I don't know if you all have heard about that, but that's our, our ethics. And um, Zach talked about on Monday. Was that the one he talked about where you can report mm -hmm. a, yep. somebody's doing something wrong or whatever you can report? Yeah, a complaint or something. Yeah. Yep, so she, she implemented that last year, and she she's the keeper of that. Um, she also handles um, a lot of the employee relations, uh, helps the managers with the proper documentation and uh, dis pre disciplinary hearings and all that kind of thing. Um, so that's that's basically what her role will be. She will also, uh, when we get the new system implemented, she is. Um, uh, the word like the module for certification, uh, training, development, all those things in Munis. She's building those, so that will be able to be stored. I, I believe some of that was able to be stored in JDE, and so we've sort of been missing that. Um, but that that's that what yeah, that's what she's. Cool. And then uh, the next one is another HR generalist, um, and we just hired this uh, <coughs> position. And that's Heather Tucker. Uh, Heather Tucker was at the fire um, station one as their admin three. three. Um, and then uh, was interested in this role. Uh, her, the main uh, duties of this role are, are recruiting and um, and I say recruiting very cautiously because the city does not really recruit. Um, we just simply do not have the resources to recruit. All of you with your HR background understand that recruiting is a discipline within HR and to, to recruit properly, uh, it takes time, it takes a lot of effort, it takes relationship building, it takes um, understanding where everything should be posted, what, what organizations, 
Um, and there's a lot of recruiting. There's a lot of hiring and positions at the city of independence. We have certain positions that are always open. We have certain positions that are hard to fill and we have certain positions that have high turnover simply because they either, you know, come in a street maintenance worker one, they go to two, they go to three, like they're moving up through the steps of the, of the union or they're moving from one department to another. So there is constant, constant activity. Um, so really what this role has done is really just the process of hiring, right? The city hire process, the applicant process, the the background checking, the drug screens, the, if there's any um, testing that needs to be done, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then also like post accident and pre-employment and CDL drug testing and things like that. That's what this position does. My goal <laughs> for this for this job, um, once we get the the upgrade complete from Eunice, they have an entire system. It's an applicant tracking system, but it's um, it's also like front facing. So if we post a job, you actually when you click on it, you're actually going into Munis and it um, you can set up pre screen questions so it could immediately knock people out because you know we can we can post for a deputy director position and get somebody who you know is a frontline worker or something or a, or a you know cashier or something right you know that, right. that just really simply does not have any the experience yeah whatever yes so the new the new system can do pre screening it will the application will be online. Um, the managers can go in there and, and see the applicants. They can do lots of things in there. If we once we hire one of those people, it's basically a push of the button and it goes into like the new hire mm -hmm. into Munis. Like it's all done within the and system. So and when do you think that's going to come about? Um, well, as soon as we as soon as we get through the upgrade and we make sure everything is working right, that that will be one of her her roles is to we already started developing it and testing it in the yeah. old version, but we didn't want to like get it out there where applicant information was actually in there because and it is going to be a little right. bit different in the new version. So okay. we we know it. We've been playing with it in the old version. So once it goes live in the in gotcha. the upgraded version, H Heather will be working on that. So that will be her role. Um, hopefully the process will become more streamlined, which will give her the opportunity to spend more time up front working with the hiring managers. Um, she she has met. I've taken her on a couple of um, meets with like a manager on so here here is how I would expect this to work. So you meet with the hiring manager and say, you know, is this is the job description how you want it? Um, are these the right, you know, parameters, right? Yeah. Qualifications. Tell us about the job. Now set that aside. Now tell me when you when you think about the person in this job, what is that person? Who is that person? What are their characteristics? What if, what are the you know, the things that aren't on this job description. And so we can have a good idea of what they're looking for and understand if and when we see it, we can we can help. I believe that's that's an important function of HR because if you hire right and you hire the right people, you have less problems on the back end. Um, and that's that quite frankly has been, I think, a missing piece at, at the city of independence. We just simply have not had the resources to to be that involved in the hiring process. And it's a shame because I I firmly believe that HR should be involved in every hire. I mean we should we should be the the contact for applicants and for candidates and we should know every person that is coming through the door. So hopefully eventually that that's like pie in the sky goal. The first one will be able to get, is to get a system that's much more modern and much more friendly to the applicants and to the managers and more streamlined. So that that's kind of the the first goal. And so right now, um, as far as getting the word out about 
positions that are open. I mean, obviously they're on the website. If somebody comes mm -hmm. to search for a job in Independence, I believe it's all on Indeed. Is that correct? It trans it goes into Indeed. Yes, I, but I think that that is just because Indeed picks it picks up. it up. I mean, right. I don't unless we work with the hiring manager and they want it specifically like in house or or yes in house or they say you know we want this on you know IPMA HR or you know. Right, something like right, you're something targeting different, something. like or a targeted right, right, industry right. or discipline. Um, we there hasn't been that in the past. Now with the new system, we can automatically set those things up to where it will automatically post at external sites. You know, LinkedIn, some of the Zip more professional. Yes. Yeah. So that is also the goal is that we will have a more widely cast net. Sure. Um, and then and, <laughs> and it's wider, but it's more specific when you need it. So if you're right. trying to hire a new veterinarian out of this shelter, you want it to be with APMA. Mm -hmm. or you want it, you know, like you don't necessarily need to talk to firefighter personnel. You know, like you can target to the different organizations hiring. That's good. I'm glad to hear that. So Heather, she's very excited about that. Like that is what attracted her to this job. And so being over in fire and being part of the whole testing and onboarding of the firefighter she has some of that in her background and she she really loves that Good. so i i i have high hopes for heather coming over to hr um, and then with that her uh, heather and melissa are both um uh, doing a little bit of revamp right now on new hire orientation um, we had to go virtual for a long time um, but they are working to bring, at least right now, they're doing some hybrid uh, and they're revamping that a little bit. But the long term goal for for onboarding employees will be that the orientation process is more than just a meeting, you know, in, in the morning, <coughs> that it would be months long, that there would be a touch point at three months and at six months and and that type of thing. So that that's the long term goal for for them as far as new hire orientation goes. That's a big job. Yeah, but well, all these are big jobs. <laughs> yeah, with with a very small mm -hmm. team, but a mighty team. So, um, and we have great support. I mean, we have lots of people who who help us and 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 you know are are, are willing to help us. So, and we work with great people here. So, and they're excited. Most of the people are really excited about this. So, um, you know, we'll see where it goes. <laughs> and are these. I'm sorry, I know you'll talk about our on sites yep. over here. Are these all the approved FTEs? Like, there's not another F. This is what we're, this is our budget year for this year. Okay. Yep. Right. yep. Um, and then the last two boxes are our on site Cigna specialist. Um, Lisa Phillips, who is our benefit specialist, is a Cigna employee, but she has been here at the city on site. For many years so she's very familiar with our employees very familiar with the Cigna plans obviously and so her role um, she does she she did help you know Terry a lot she also helps Melissa but she helps employees if they have claim questions or specific questions about the benefits she also helps with open enrollment um, you know she she explains she's very good at explaining the plans um, but that's that's basically her role is to really be a support for the employees. What, what would happen? <coughs> These are identified as Cigna. If you went out for bids and got Blue Cross, would they would they disappear? They sure would. Okay. <laughs> yep. Unless they decided to. <laughs> Unless they decided to go well, to Blue Cross. Um, <laughs> I mean, but this is a it's a large self insured plan, and so if we would go out to market, um, that would be an expectation. That would be an expectation. I mean, we 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 are so reliant on these two people on them. Even yesterday, I mean, they're just amazing people. They are just, uh, yeah, I, I can't speak enough about the resources, what they do for our employees, and especially being in house. They're just amazing, and um, we we just rely on that so much. So we would make that an ex a minimum expectation yeah. um, for any new bid. for any new okay. person that would help us administer. The self-insurance. And keep in mind, um, we we are still the insurer, 
but Cigna is the TPA, the, the TPA, TPA yeah. administrator. Yeah. So. So they set up the paperwork to. Oh, gosh. Okay. The yeah, they do all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. So, Sound like it works. It does work. We have a great partnership you with Cigna. It what works. Yeah. yeah. And well, then, how long is our contract with Cigna now? Another mm, 20 years, I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. we just did a three. I think it's through 24. I think you just did a three year, yeah. yeah. And then, yeah. And then CBIS came on. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. And that's a three. So we're alternating. So we made sure that our, our all of our professionals, um, their end of their contracts are different times, different years. We were having some trouble when we first came in that we were going out for bid for all of our providers at the same time, and we just did not want that yeah. to happen. So we I just over the last couple of years we've been pushing, uh, working with contracts to get them out. I think we've got them set now, but we're not trying to yeah. do bids for all the providers at the same time. And then the last box is, uh, she's also a Cigna employee, but Selena Good, she was a, a city employee and then um, now works for Cigna, but she's here on site and she does all of the wellness. Um, I'm not sure if you know uh, Selena, but she does a great job. So she, she um, does the Motivate Me program. Um, is that through Cigna? So uh -huh. you get points and uh -huh. then you can buy, yep. pr get price. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Incentives and yeah. like that. Yep. Uh, so she she is well versed also with our plans. So she she totally understands our plans um, and then does wellness. Since we have brought CBiz on board, um, CBiz, Selena, and and uh, the city have developed a, you know like a core wellness team and and working towards like wellness goals, having a kind of a strategy for wellness. So that's what we've been working on with CBIS and Cigna is how do we how do we make wellness uh, more of a um, more of a holistic program for the city employees, but also how do we make it beneficial to where it it should align the goals of the wellness program should align with how can we impact the self-funded mm -hmm. right. medical? Right. How can we keep know? down our claims? Yeah. So how can we reduce our claims? How can we get people more consumer driven and taking more, if you will, ownership sure. in their in their health and and wellness? So that that's kind of a you know a bigger goal than sure. what wellness has been in the past. So that's that's what we're doing. And and we're seeing, you know, we're getting data and we're getting um that'll kind of put together so we can see this program could, you know, help the acute illnesses that we have and, and things like that. So yeah, it's very interesting. It's important. Yes, very important. Given the way healthcare costs are these days. Yeah. And where they're going. Yep. Um, so that's HR. That that's a little bit about the team and and how we've kind of come together just now i mean heather was our last hire and it's just she's over to, she's over training yeah her she's training her replacement, replacement. Yeah. um a little bit about what is on at least the immediate horizon for for hr um very good yeah excellent questions comments good jokes <laughs> <laughs> hr appropriate please <laughs> Yes, yes, don't throw it out on the limb. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, we can talk about our ethics. Yeah. <laughs> I have no good jokes, period. I can't tell a joke, so. <laughs> okay, so are we ready to, to go to the fifth agenda item there? Um, and that would be, um, well, I'd like to get to the detail away, the frequency of these meetings what we're going to demand of ourselves and attending these meetings and what we'd like to prioritize issues and then uh when we would have our next meeting what the agenda would look like uh we've got about 40 minutes left again this on time i do so okay <clears throat> should we tackle that first one the frequency of meetings so we've not had any set schedule 
in the past. We really have only met when we've had issues um, that would be appropriate for the board. Uh, there is a sense, though, among some of us that we want to have something more regular, maybe monthly, maybe quarterly, maybe twice a year. Um, not sure what that frequency would be. So that I like have some discussion um, from all of you. I know, Ron, you've got some ideas about that, at least in your email, if you had some ideas. <laughs> well, no. I mean, today was really, really good. And, you know, get an opportunity to meet uh, everybody and to discuss some of the issues. And I guess I sort of bugged uh, Teresa a little bit that we, we hadn't had meetings and we'd also had our last meeting. We didn't have a quorum and we were on TV, Channel 9. And so so I was a little bit embarrassed by that last meeting. So, uh, but I think we need to have a regular meeting. Maybe it's a quarterly basis. Uh, you know, certainly whenever there is a, a hearing on, a, on an employee dispute, a grievance. Uh, we, yeah. we would have that. But, you know, I think if you look at the if you look at the city code having to do with what the responsibility of this board is, I'm not sure that we're meeting all the responsibilities because it, it's fairly it's fairly loose in terms of, you know, recommends items to the city council regarding HR personnel issues. And I think there's a lot of things we ought to, ought to be looking at. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, I, I, I've got a whole list, but I don't want to bore everybody, but I'll, I'll mention a couple of them. Uh, you know, every city council meeting you hear people make some comment about recruitment. <laughs> and it seems to me that this is a really important issue. I live out close on the south side of town and 40 highways of speedway. We've had several fatal accidents mm -hmm. and I never see a cop car. I, I never see a police car, you know, so I know that they're shorthanded. Maybe their facilities aren't the greatest, but maybe we could do something as the board to, to, you know, you know recommend something in terms of recruitment. Now, I know that every city in the country is having that same problems. Nothing is new here. But what is it that we can do in independence that might, you know, help out on that particular issue? I don't know what it is. I don't have any bright ideas. Darn it. I'm like waiting with bated yeah. breath. <laughs> I don't know why the problem is. Is it because, because independence doesn't pay enough money? Or because, uh, you know, what, what are the issues? Because maybe you have a, a lousy building to work out of? Uh, you know, I've heard that, but I, I don't know. So maybe these are, this is an issue that personnel board might have a little bit of political clout, you know, maybe going to the city council saying, hey, we need that new public safety building out south uh, where people feel good about coming to work. Uh, yesterday, the, the mayor of Kansas City talked about some other issues, a $15 minimum wage. I don't know why independents can't have a minimum $15 minimum wage. It might be 20. I, I think 20 is is better than 15, but I don't know whether you've got the money to do that. And, and most of your jobs, I noticed on the job listings, they had some of the 13 or 12 yeah. or 14. But I believe that it, nobody should go to work less than 15 bucks an hour. And uh, and, I, and and I don't you know disagree with that, but I, I uh, you know and of course this is just discussion. I mean nothing formal or anything, but I know what it took this year for for the fiscal year and we just fiscal year that we just started for July 1. I mean, they couldn't balance the budget without that 4.2 million that came from ARP 3.2, 4.2. That basically allowed you guys to get all the workers count things in, all the overtime budgeted and all that, because if you guys didn't have that money coming from ARP, you guys would have had to cut what 3.2 or 4.2. I can't remember. Yeah, it would have been. Uh definitely would have been a challenge that yeah. four million dollars is what we refer to as lost revenues that we do hopefully anticipate getting back post COVID. So a lot of the fines, building permits, those kind of things that weren't happening during COVID. But yeah, you're, you're yeah, right. there's correct. Some, I mean, budget is absolutely very tight. Yeah. And and we've got, you know, no, more, heard, more money. Yeah. We have yeah. very professional managers. And I think if that is a mandate that I think that they could Get there. Yeah. It's fine. They would just have to, yeah, they'd have to 
put the budget but, together and see what yeah. it is when you do that. There might be some service differentials, right. but ultimately, yeah, I don't think they're, they're I don't really think good. Bad goal. Very impressed by that. You know, I think a lot of this stuff is image, and I think you know, I mean, Truman Medical Center has got a fifteen dollar minimum wage, and a lot of other places around City of Independence that would be nice on the news. I mean, it it changes the image of a, of a city government. And the Kansas City's trying to do that, so you're going to have to meet KC if that gets approved. I suspect it will. Uh, you know, so why shouldn't independence come along and maybe this board recommends? And I don't think it would affect too many people. Maybe some of the non union, maybe office workers or custodians or whatever, but I have no idea how many or how much money we're talking about. Well, unfortunately, it doesn't just impact a few people. So when you when you increase the starting wages for people, then that it causes it, compression. It causes compression. Yeah. And many of our entry level jobs are union jobs. And so those are negotiated benefits. Well, they are negotiated and not to say that we we couldn't. I mean, no union is going to turn down more money for their right, people. Right. Right. But, you know, it. it it, it has it has a domino effect, so it's it's yeah. not just about raising a minimum wage. Um, you know that's a that's a, that's almost thirty two thousand dollars a year. That that's that's a decent wage. So then, how how do you how do you put that in perspective for all the other jobs, the the jobs that aren't union or the jobs that aren't entry right. level? So, um, not to say that we couldn't look at that, um, but it it isn't just raising the 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 right the minimum wage of a few people. We yeah, don't pay not. anybody oh, minimum question. wage now. I mean, what is the lowest pay? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. My question is this. So why don't we compile a, uh, a uh, this? I, first, I think we should, I'm in agreement with the quarterly and in between that quarterly meetings, issues like you uh, have just brought up, which is just one when there is many more we need to discuss. I think the major uh, focus we should be focusing on right now is preparing for or coming up with a, a uh, schedule that we all can discuss those issues that you missed. You have got mm -hmm. down. You only went to yeah. one. Right. And you got a whole list. Right. Need, I think we need to know where it should come together as the board and discuss those meetings write down those particular things that you you just gave an example we uh, went off the rail <laughs> yeah well okay yeah. We, okay so yeah. I, i'm in agreement with quarterly and in between the quarterly meetings issues that you mm -hmm. uh and i have some too okay yeah. okay we need to be brought can us as the board we need to come together more often to discuss or to uh clarify and, and make this uh this uh priority of issues and present our uh, suggestions or things to the city council and uh, follow the procedure of the uh, charter of this city. Okay. So I would make a motion that um, because we are at a point now where we're trying, where we need to get the list together yeah. and prioritize right. the list, that we, I think we should meet monthly until yeah. we get that together. Right. That we can revisit. Right. So I would say I would make a motion to meet monthly until a time decided in the future when we would then could go quarterly once we've caught up. So. Yeah. Yeah. Because we haven't met for a long time and we do have, I think, a lot of issues. We have a lot of smarts in this room. Um, so is there a second to that that we would meet monthly? Uh, and the purpose of those meetings primarily would be to prioritize issues that this board can and should address. Um, that seems like a huge project to me, but a very important one, very timely one. Um, so I think that covers two things. One, the frequency and the prioritization of issues. It doesn't really address. The attendance department. No, and I do think we need a pretty correct attendance. Requirement. We're going to dig into this. We need to dig into it. Seriously. So, so is there an addition I to that? Yeah. 
can we make an addition to that motion on what the attendance requirements would be? I would suggest we make that separate because this this motion will address when we meet and then the other would address that we're asking people to meet. You know what I mean? Like, because we're going to change the per, like per, presumably the attendance policy should quote attendance policy should yeah. go for perpetuity versus right now we're talking about something we're going to do for a few months oh, and then may that. change it to quarterly or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I, I think we're probably getting a little in the weeds, you know, with it, but I would make just that one motion yeah. first. Personally. Yeah, I'm, okay, I'm fine so with that. Okay, so is there a second? Yeah, to a second, yeah. To, okay, and so then everybody that would be at, on the board um, would agree with that motion? How many eyes do we have? That we would be monthly to prioritize our issues? Okay, so full. Okay, good. Okay. And the sole purpose would be to prioritize issues that this board could and should address with the City Council human resources and with city council. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Do I have it right? I, I guess I just, and again, maybe too weedy for me, but you know, I'm getting in the weeds, like not solely because we, we there may be other things that come up that we want to discuss, but yes, the, the basic purpose is to do that. Okay. I mean, but I think again, the wording is. Okay. Well, that's fine with me. And, and I guess we need to do a particular day of the week or a time that meets everybody so everybody can be here. Yeah. So, so I don't, today's a Friday at 10 o'clock, so I don't know, you know whether that works out or not. And I think that we need to really make sure, and this will do, this will help us with this, is we need to say, you know, like we're going to meet on the whatever Friday this is at 10 p.m., the third Friday or whatever it is. Third Friday, 10, 10 a.m., yeah, not 10 p.m., uh, you know, 10 a.m., whatever that is, so that we can get it out to the employees because we need to, they need to have lead time on what the agenda items are, you know, because they're welcome to attend. You know, I had a couple calls last night. It was like, wait, why did we, all, why did we find out about this two days in advance? And I said, well, about our meeting here. yeah, about this meeting. Okay. And I said, well, you know, if we're going to make a change to a policy or procedure, then we have to give 10 days. 10 business days or two weeks, I just call it. But I think it's important because if you do things like two days before, I mean, we, we've known for what, three weeks we were going to do this. So I think we should tell people ahead of time, which is what this will accomplish, so that they're not like, why are they meeting? Two, you know, is there something going on? We don't need any conspiracy. Employees do. I didn't even know anybody know about it. Yeah, I well, they, well they get the agenda. The, the agenda goes out to all employees. Oh, does it? Oh, okay. mm -hmm. Because personnel and board, well, all of them, so, yeah, but this will accomplish that. You know, if we say we're going to meet on the third, whatever, whatever in this room, then they can be told that and they'll know that that's, they want it on their calendar, they put it. Who do you have, restrictions, don't you, Kendra, um, on when you can meet? Yes, is there a is. best day or best time? It's usually the second Friday of a month because a third or fourth Friday of a month could be a month end, and uh, my manager makes overtime mandatory. Wow. So sounds like a post office. If it's mandatory, you're going to be there. You <laughs> got to be there, and I'm too close to retirement to get fired over it. <laughs> Understood. What does that look like on the city's calendar? Second Fridays. Uh, that's fine with me. Because I, I, you know, like every board has their thing, and I don't think there's anything else. Oh. No, I think we're fine. I, this office should should work. We're we're continuing working on technology issues, so hopefully, um, hopefully the people online have been able to see. Is this a is this a a minute taking? No. It's actually oh. visual. Yeah, it's it's audio and visual. So it's just a whole I don't know. No, no. So it, so every time you talk, it focuses on you, and then you're. Oh, you're sitting projected. We have projected. people that are online right now that are listening and watching. Right. So, mm -hmm. yeah. oh, okay. yeah. so Kinder talks, it will slowly turn and focus on focus on her. Mm -hmm. and, and and that's a good thing. We might might want to talk about that. I mean, with this Delta variant, you know, of how you go about doing this. I have never done this with this Microsoft Teams or whatever it is. Right. And that for right now, all meetings that are public, we're offering a hybrid option. So that's that's 
why we're doing it this way. Could, we could somebody it. interject something from the public? Or? Um, we don't have it set up to do that right now, but if if the chair would like public comment or uh, we, we could open that up. I know any good jokes by the people that don't. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, later on, if we get there, yeah. yeah, I think during the planning stages, yeah. I think we need yeah. to just discuss right. amongst keep it small. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, they could hear, but yeah, know, but yeah, um, because then we could even consider if there's something that we I don't know if the charter, I mean, obviously, the charter allows the PAB to have public hearings, but I don't know if there was anything we would ever have a public hearing about or whether that's allowed on the charter. But so we can always work on input if we decide we want to do that. I, I believe anything. Uh, changing of the personnel mm -hmm. has a comment. Yes, has a comment period. A, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Would be public comment. Yeah, that would right. be required. Okay. That. Yeah, right. More like a hearing. Yeah. yeah, which is what we had when we with the whole retiree thing. Yeah, I remember that. Now. Okay. So second Friday of the month, shall we agree on that? I'm good. What's that? Second Friday of the month, That's shall fine. we agree on that? And at ten. What day is that next time? Say that again. 13th. August. August 13th. August 13th. Right? Am I calculating it right? August 13th. At 10 o'clock or 10, 10 a.m.? So it's three weeks from today. Huh? Three weeks from today. Okay. okay. 10 a.m. In, in this room? Yep. Conference room A. This is a better room than downstairs. I like it better. Yeah, nice design. So 10 a.m., August 13th. Okay. That's a Friday. This room, Commissioner A. Um, do you want the schedule for two hours? And I'm a start on time and done time for now. With I, jokes and don't sleep. Yeah, yeah. You can leave early if you want to, Ron. No, I mean, you know. If we get done early. Take it down. Yeah. <laughs> She's pushing your button. <laughs> You're pushing each other. Yeah, I'm good with I'm good with that. I mean ten what, to noon. At ten to noon. Beginning because we have a lot to discuss, I think. Okay. And should we, um, you know, obviously we want to avoid any sunshine law issues talking amongst ourselves. So we don't want to do that. Should we, like your list and whoever has comments or whatever, should we send them to Jennifer or whoever she would like to accumulate those? Or to you, like for next agenda items, like Ron wants to look at. Number one, number two, number three. Yeah, send it to, to me. Okay. I'll be responsible. Jennifer, this is okay with you. I'll be <laughs> <laughs> whatever you want. <laughs> You'll accumulate them, then talk to her yeah. about the agenda. Yeah. yeah, so I would be responsible for getting the agenda on the web. I'm working with um, Marissa. Yep. On and she, she'll help us with it. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. I mean, it was like, they'll bring you. Okay. Um, so yeah, I can accumulate that, send it to her, she'll design it, she'll get it out on the web for us. And can we agree that we could get that out a week before the meeting? We can do that. So that the, can do that the personnel, true personnel can see that. Right. Yeah. Our, our main contact for these meetings is going to be, I'm not sure who. Probably Jennifer Vargo. I I always send Marissa. It's glad that it's going to retail. Yeah. I know yeah. I always I always send, I always send Marissa for the a lot of time. people do, and she doesn't correct me. Yeah, I was going to say Marissa. Yep. Awesome. She's very good. Good meeting. Okay, so we have um, the attendance requirements. We did not get to that. Any comment on what we think the attendance requirements should be for the second Friday of the month? Until further notice, I believe everybody should be here every time, unless you obviously have, I mean, if you're in the hospital or you know, whatever, you know, something like that. Dying. Yeah, yeah, if you die. Well, if you die, I guess we can get it on that. Cool. An excuse if somebody has a medical procedure scheduled or something that they really can't juggle, then, you know, we could do. You know, that's that's an excuse that I agree. Yeah. You know. Uh, I agree. Yeah. And we've obviously looked at three weeks from now, so we know we're all good to be here three weeks from now unless something extreme happens or whatever. So do we have any uh any kind I of never know. 
You yeah. never know. Right, because uh, my work right now is got to have it for me, got to have it. So they can call you. I'm on call pretty much 24 hours a day, seven yeah, days a week. Seven days a week. Yeah, okay. January 4th, you'll be free. January 4th, I'll be free. <laughs> Although, don't look for me in February. Because the month of February, I'll be in Florida. I'll go with you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which to me, that's an excuse. I mean, if you're held over by your employer. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's nothing yeah. you can do. I mean. Oh, yeah. yeah. As it is right now, I got to go inside. Yeah. yeah. Unless that changes. And we could have meetings if we're if we're not making motions to yeah. you know pass anything, then we still have meetings if we want to have a quorum. Just can't. Does the city have any kind of policy with regard to uh, vaccinations? So policemen or firemen or anybody could respond to somebody's home and not be vaccinated. Mm -hmm. Is that something we should make a recommendation on at some point? I think it went hard to look into it, but I personally, I think that we won't have a good stand on that. I, That's I, not a personnel I, issue. Mom. Hmm? That's not a personnel issue. It's a policy issue for the mayor uh, to address, well, not, uh, not just address, but come up with a policy. And then the city council probably would you do a referendum and vote on it to right. see if that's something she want to mandate or however, whatever. Well, but when it comes to us. the personnel of uh, independence, okay, it, it's kind of tweaking on the borderline. Yeah, it is kind of, it really is, you know, until she or she comes with a mandate or say, hey, a non requirement, whatever, okay, until the city council addresses that issue okay and then when it comes to the uh, policies of uh individual or uh, uh uh employees let's say she mandated but we got a you have a uh employee policeman fireman emt whatever to do that and uh there's consequences okay if there's consequences then we would address that consequence of the actions of the uh, employee uh of the independents so we can you know, but I think we can we can make recommendations to the council for consideration. I mean, I mean, it's not just them coming to us. If I understand the charter right, I mean, yeah. we could go to them and say, you know, if we decided to. I mean, just like all these other items that we're discussing. Right. You know, if, now of course if they bring something forward, like I was, I don't know if you heard me speak at the meeting where they council members brought forward that they wanted to have all executive level people move into the city within six months. And I got up and spoke and said, I'm sorry, this is a change to policies and procedures. We as the personnel board have the right to have a, vo a voice on this and I'm exercising our right to have a voice on this. They backed down because it was, it's gonna be a charter violation. Um, so, Yes, I mean, sometimes it comes down from them, but I think we should also recommend. Now, I'm not talking specifically, should we recommend the vaccine thing or whatever, but I think we can go to them with things. Oh, yeah. And, and as far as vaccine, I guess to my point, what I was going to say is until they become not just emergency use author authorization by the FDA, that is going to be, if when they move to that step, it will be easier if employers decide to mandate that. But that's not going to happen for period of time yet just on that piece but I still think we could go to them with things mm -hmm. yeah I mean yeah I think it should be offered I don't think it should be mandated that they do it I think it should be offered oh well, yeah you can get a vaccine anywhere I mean right. drive down to CVS right now walk in and say right. shot and they'll give it to well, you or you, or, but, you, or you could have a policy that says well we'll give you the day off to recuperate I mean if that's an inducement or incentive you know, I mean, after you've taken the vaccine, and just like the state's giving them ten thousand dollars for nine hundred employees or nine hundred people, yeah. you know, it's some kind of an inducement to let you recover after your second shot. Yeah, you know. So. But my employer, when I was vaccinated, they came to the site. They yeah. came to the job site. They didn't have to drive to see this. Mm -hmm. They had to drive to work. 
And then they bust me down to have it shot, have the shot. And I think that that might be something, you know, hey, city said, okay, I'm going to go visit the HR department. Anybody that wants to have a COVID shot, here it is, sign up for it. Well, we we are offering COVID on site. I mean, if we have multiple of those, the uh, health department is doing Mm -hmm. that. Right, I signed up through the health department. I haven't heard from them yet. No, not the, the Independence Health Department, the Jackson our, County. Uh, the Jackson our, County. Yeah. Independence yeah. has just kicked up. We just got yeah. reauthorized for our health so department Christina. in December. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, no, there's no barrier to somebody mm-hmm. getting it. Yeah. I mean, if you drive to work as a firefighter, you can drive to CVS. You know what I mean? I, All right. I don't think the city should spend time and should bring vaccines down to the temperature they need to be and all these other things to have a sign-up thing and yeah. have people come. Because it's just you know, so, oh, yeah. we have a I do. I'm not getting all the information or nor the uh communication through email. Something is wrong with our system where uh I don't know. I just don't get it. I'm not received. Like the email you sent, you said you said I didn't receive it. Mm-hmm. I know I checked. Uh so I don't know if we need to update or we need to, uh, but I know we need to find a uh, solution to it. Okay. Uh, if I'm not getting uh, emails emails or communication. Yeah, I, and it, when, I sent out, when I sent out a couple of things, it didn't bounce. It bounced on Kendra. We bounced yeah. through two, two, I, two addresses and got to her third one. So, so is it your Blair? It's Blair underscore call. Right. With a K, that's a K. Right. At yahoo.com. Yes, okay. Okay. Yeah. Because your agenda for today, I didn't even see. That is it's crazy. Been... Yeah. Blair yeah. underscore yeah. call. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Blair yeah. underscore call. Well, I, I got a Tuesday. Yeah. I got a Tuesday. Sometimes I've got to bounce back on hers and, and his. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So well, we got to start. I don't know what the deal was. Maybe, maybe I don't have. Of course, I'm not very smart technologically, so I don't yeah, I'm kind of maybe I'm in the same way that you were on. Yeah, uh, but uh, let's see if we can. Why don't I test it again? Okay. Today. Well, I had four different employers, and each one changes it. So I knew. I knew. Team, I knew it wasn't. First one I did have yeah, an email. <laughs> Second one, because I ran the lead shop, I had an email address. Mm-hmm. Third employer said, you're just a gunner. I mean, yes, you have email, but you can't access it. So yeah, I never really, got into How do they communicate with their account. employees if they don't give them email? This one, I don't have an email address. So the only email address I have is the Gmail account. Okay. And that is a Kendra Brockman, all small letters, period. AB at gmail.com. Okay. And I told that to the city clerk so that the, so that they crossed out the old ones because that's where I was yeah. getting her email. So yeah, and I used to live on McHenry Street, and then I made that a rental property, and then uh, I that's a good that's a good point that you repaired it on and communication. I don't want to spend anything, and so in now I'm over on 18th Street. I don't I don't want to receive anything in snail mail from that relates to the board because the last time that that happened it took five days I called Zach Walker twice it took five days from, to go from here to my house everything that was sent can be electronic so I do not want anything snail mail or yes yeah, snail mail but you've got the Pony Express where you live well our Dachshund Express we don't have Dachshund so we run the Dachshund Express but I but like to me, like everything should be sent electronically. Nothing needs right. to be sent unless there's something we need to sign or something, which we uh, don't have to. I myself, I'm the complete opposite. Yeah. I hate, I very seldom ever get into my Gmail account. <laughs> it's just the thing I about it is it takes so long. Like if the agenda goes I, out two days ago, you're going to get it today or tomorrow, you know? And that's fine because I can wait. Yeah. I've got time. I'm, <laughs> Yeah, you can wait till after the meeting's over to have the agenda. <laughs> but I prefer snail mail. Um, that will help if we're getting that. I mean, it out my bill is electronically. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm snail mail all the way. 
Well, are we about ready to go? Okay, we've got eight minutes. Anybody have anything? <laughs> yeah, you're not required. No, I think this is a good meeting. It's a very good meeting. I make a motion to adjourn. Thank yes. you, Jennifer. Very, I very second. good. Okay. Yeah. All in favor? Okay, yeah. All in favor, right? Say bye. Bye bye. 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 <laughs> Great. Thanks, guys. Oh.